Hello everyone, I'm Fairly Theta. Welcome to the Witching Hour. And tonight, we're getting seduced by the official witch of Los Angeles. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Opal's trying to seduce me. <laughs> Did you miss this? Did you miss our TV set? So how have you been? I haven't seen you forever. No, no, no slipper. Really no slipper. <laughs> is it really time to go out? We just started the show. Bring the other slipper. Bring the other slipper to see how bad you want them. You bring the other slipper and then you prove to me you really want to go out. And off she goes. Uh, uh other uh, slipper. Other slipper. <laughs> and we'll be back. Bark. How are you? I'm okay, how are you? I'm great, I'm, I'm peachy. You look seductive. Well, our subject today is super 60s. So I felt like I had to do her some justice. Oh, how, wait, how do I look? You look phenomenal, well, thank you. Yeah. We're gonna be talking about one of my new favorite authors. And I say new, she's not a new author. In fact, she's dead. In fact, she's dead. <laughs> Um, recently, but no longer with us. We're gonna be talking about Louise Hebner. Like, should we More just make a drink first? Yes, yes. <laughs> so- That's the only reason why your mother watches this show. <laughs> it's our drinking show. Yeah. So because we're talking about Louise Hebner, we're going to be making the witch's word. And I'm super excited about this because we get to use something we've been holding off on using for a while. Mm -hmm. Strega. Liqueur. Also known as what? Strega liqueur. Also known as witch liquor? Well, that's what I just, I just oh. transit. I don't think anyone calls it witch liquor. Okay. We've been calling it witch liquor, but I don't think anyone else does. Wait, it's not called witch liquor? It's called strega, which translates to witch in Italian. Oh, yeah. so Italians call it witch liquor. Sort of, yeah. Sort uh -huh. of, kind of. <laughs> oh. More or less. This was a gift from Dina from Amityville Apothecary. We have not opened it yet because we knew we wanted to save it for an episode of this. Yeah. Shaker, please. Measuring cup. Jigger. Jigger. I always forget the name of this thing. He refused to learn it. It's the measuring cup. This is equal parts of everything. Three quarters of an ounce of gin. See our butterfly pea flower gin. Look at how blue this is. Three quarters of an ounce of ginger liqueur and three quarters of an ounce of strega. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. This oh. is kind of our magic color change ingredient here. And then we shake. Some good shaking, baby. Watch what color it is. Ooh. It's so much more pink. Yes. So butterfly pea flower is um, acid sensitive. So it starts out this indigo blue, and when you add an acid to it, it becomes pink. Kind of like a magenta. Sugar on the strawberries. Sugar on the strawberries. Oh, it's really refreshing. It's very herbal. Mm hmm which I love. It's not bitter though. Like it does mm -mm. have a nice balanced tart sweet. Mmm. That's outstanding. It goes down way too easy. I grew up thinking that Lori Cabot was the only official witch of anything. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that she was designated the official witch of Massachusetts in the mid 70s. Louise Hebner was designated the official witch of Los Angeles in 1968. She was the first designated official witch in the government. And she also knew her stuff. So this is Louise Hebner's second book, Never Strike a Happy Medium. It was published in 1970. Her first book was Power Through Witchcraft. Dust jacket of oh. this book says, orgies generate psychic power. Sex energy and psychic energy are related. Ghosts exist. 
Funny feelings can be indigestion. Or ghosts. Cast a voodoo seduction spell. Mm. So you can tell she goes kind of heavy on the lurid. So she has many other books. Beautiful, beautiful little like square spell books. It starts out very much kind of like an autobiography. Clearly she was not a very educationally ambitious child. Mm -hmm. And she also didn't necessarily have any strong drives. So they were just like, well, sweetie, you better meet a rich guy. And her grandmother was like, no, 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 she's going to be a witch. So the first few chapters at least are very much about her and kind of her worldview. I will say there are some very dated ideas in this book. I found myself having to kind of go back over passages to just even go, oh, that was a joke. Hold on, let me read that with a sense of humor. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm used to reading occult books in this very dry kind of like medieval grimoire sense where they're just, they're books. Oh yes, this is signed. <laughs> um, I happened to find a signed copy of it and it signed Desiree and John, Merry Christmas, Love Grandma Louise, 2006. So if your grandmother was Louise Hebner, I have your book. Wow. Um, <laughs> Holy moly! Yeah! Um, she passed away in 2014, but this was apparently a, a signed gift to her grandkids. So Louise Hebner handled that book, wrote in it, and gave to her grandchildren. Yeah, and then they gave it up, and I have oh, it now, so... I feel, I feel a little bad about that. I know, me too. But I adore it, so okay, that's well, what's that's, important. It found itself in the right hands. Yes. Hey, Boop! Hey, hey, Boop. You want to walk on? So this is 1969, which would have been a year after she was designated the official witch of Los Angeles. This record seems to be of a time when there were a lot of witch records being produced. And they're interesting, but they're kind of just like audiobooks. This is a trip. There is this psychedelic background music. It's like a kaleidoscopic experience. I really do think it was a very well done record. Um, and like, it's, it's not just a spoken word record. There is some really interesting musical moments that happen in it. It's really well thought out too, because after the introduction, the first like actual spell on this record, and it is a record full of spells mostly, is a self fascination ritual. Mm. That's definitely something where when I talk about love spells, and I've talked about love spells before on this channel, and I will probably do it again, the best way to really start a love spell is with yourself. What was... I was casting a love spell on myself. Oh, you were? Yeah. Okay. The best way to start a love spell is with yourself. Mm -hmm. Because if you are not in the right headspace to believe that you can have this, to believe that you can you can seduce someone or bring this kind of love into your life, then it's not going to work. You know, there's a spell for protection. There's a spell to raise energy. So like she does really have a pretty good grip on what it takes to get this work done. So do you think she was the real deal? I do believe that she knew what she was talking about. If nothing else, mythology and folklore. And in fact... That's kind of her claim to fame. Oh. Let's talk about how she became the official witch oh. of Los Angeles. Yes. So let's talk about LA. Hey, you know what I've heard about? Nobody walks in LA. I'm just gonna throw out song titles. <laughs> Someone once told me I look like Dale Bazio, and I don't see it. Who's Dale Bazio? Something the like... singer of Oh Missing, missing Person. Person. Yes. Oh really? Yes. Yeah, Del Bazio sounds like a golfer. She and her husband were missing persons. Um Oh my god, did they ever were they ever found or Louise Hebner makes it up to LA. She was actually something of a radio star. You know what? I heard she was killed by video. So she was on K L A C as the astrologer. And she would read horoscopes, 12 different horoscopes, every two hours. Wow, like the traffic report? 
Sort of, yeah. The, the, it was wow. the LA Horoscope Report. And they started introducing her as the staff witch. So she kind of rolled with it. Um, several politicians came to her and asked if she would organize some charity benefits for LA County. The county asked her whether she would be able to perform a ritual to bless the county in some way. Oh. So she was going to she was going to cast a countywide spell. And she thought, what better to start this off than a spell for sexual potency? Oh my god. And then she did did she do it? She did. Everybody who attended the event was given a red candle and she led this spell and instructed them to light their candle and direct their intention. The incantation she gave was bright the flame, light the fire, red is the color of desire. And they were instructed to chant this and get louder and louder and louder and louder and build this fervor. That was the spell that she led everybody through. She was designated official witch of Los Angeles County. And that's, that's a big deal. It is a big deal. Yeah. So obviously she made a point of advertising herself as the official witch of Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And Los Angeles came back to her and said, about that. <laughs> We'd rather you not use that title anymore. Louise Hebner was an Aries. And Aries don't back down. Must have had a lot of diplomacy somewhere, somehow. Mm -hmm. Um, Because the Aries inclination would be go for the jugular. And she did. But with style. But with style. (laughs) That's a Libra. I think it's a Libra. It's a very Libra impulse. But remember, Libra and Aries are opposing signs. Mm -hmm. They're two sides of the same coin. So there is a lot of one in the other. So she wrote back and she was just like, okay, I understand that this was a publicity stunt on your part to get me to do your event for free with all of my connections. I hope your county doesn't love sex because I'm going to have to revoke that spell that I cast for you (laughs) since this was all a farce anyway. (laughs) She holds a press conference to ask the press to bear witness to her de-spelling of the county. Of their libido. The libido of, of Los Angeles. And furthermore, she calls out Supervisor Ernest Debs. Oh, no. Who she personally gave the golden horn of vitality. The media announces it's no longer valid. Louise Hebner has revoked the potency of Ernest Debs' horn of vitality. He's no longer a vital man. (gasps) But she was allowed to keep her title. Wow. After a media battle, the media got involved. They were on her side and... So it happened. And that's how she won. So she won because she knew how to work the system. Yes, she did. Which is a a magic of itself, isn't it? It is. It really is. When you talk about seduction, Mm -hmm. she seduced a lot of people into getting what she needed. So ultimately... Her magic worked. She's seductive. Seductive? Seductive. 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 <laughs> I imagine like a duck with lipstick yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. Do, do they have ducks have lips? Can no. Ducks be seductive? No. <laughs> okay.